Roberts. I'm the host of The Long Show. We're here in downtown Keene, a little breezy, a little sunny, a little cloudy at the Pumpkin Fest, the 20th annual. I'm here with my guest. Dave Curran, Southeast Keene Neighborhood Group. What is the Southeast Keene Neighborhood Group? Uh, the Southeast Keene Neighborhood Group was a group of neighbors in the section of uh, Southeast Keene. Uh, our boundaries are Water Street, Main Street, Optical Ave, and um, <coughs> 101. Um, four years ago, approximately, um, we noticed a big influx of students moving into the neighborhood and affecting the quality of life of the residents that live in that southeast Portland uh, town, and um, decided to do something about it, so we started the group. But when we're talking about it, we're not talking about all students, maybe just a small group of students. Oh, correct, correct. But what we did notice was a large, a large component of the residential homes were... Beautiful. Okay, here we go. So, um, as I was saying, uh, we noticed, no we noticed the, um, that residential housing started to dwindle and, and more and more um, single family homes were being converted and over to rentals. And, you know, that not really being the, the true issue. I mean, the issue was that small portion of students that were acting up, but it was affecting the neighborhood. So we started the group, um, started voicing our, you know, uh, contacting the community leaders, the, our city councilors, uh, the mayor, uh, and notifying them of the problems going on and um, we've been working at it from then. And I noticed over the past couple of years it was improving, but this year seems to be a little bit different. Yeah, it's funny. Um, they, they comment that it comes in cycles. So this is, a, uh, this is the fourth year, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, they've said that because of this, how it's so cyclical from what they've tracked in the past that uh, this is the year they noticed the change. This is going to be the big year. Uh, I, supposedly next year it'll start to settle down again, um, but because the King Sentinel had an article about a month ago talking about the number of underage alcohol drinking and other problems this year. Yes, with the spike up. Yes, and and it's funny because they added all three schools this in then into the article, and um, we've actually the way they calculated we beat out UNH, which was and an UNH interesting. UNH is three times the size. Correct, correct. And so this is nothing new. Um, Plymouth State, the law enforcement up there is doing something a little different. I think in there kind of um, uh, not really irritating the students, but uh, they're more aggressive in their procedures of how they're handling their off-campus problems. And um, it's caused a little bit of a stir. Uh, UNH has had the problems with off-campus housing and, and the issues that affect the community over there. Uh, they had, they started a landlord association and, and a well-run one, and that went on for some years, and they just passed a disorderly house ordinance. So it just goes to show you that, you know, there is a problem out there. The, um, I live in your area, yeah. and my wife doesn't like it because I'm a little bit more lenient. Yeah. I don't want to be hypocritical, but some of the stuff that was going on, I was doing it went to Keene State when we had Alpha and Delta House. Those were pretty rowdy um, places. Emerald Street, Davis Street was pretty rowdy. But last night, it went really over the limit. I got woken up about 12 o'clock and I look outside my house. There's about 50 kids out there. Yeah. And there's about five or six. They just got a guy on the ground kicking them, wailing them. And there's a bunch of other kids with beer and they were just drinking and everything, having as if they were at um, a night fight, a fight night. Um, it's funny because, you know, it's, I think it's a social change. People are, you know, we're moving forward in a lot of aspects in society. And I was talking to a, a gentleman last Saturday about this, how, you know, we're more accepting of a lot of different situations in life. But in the same token, you know, um, I think it's the kind younger like generation, pack type. Well, not only that, but they're 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 more apt to do things like this. And you were you were more well behaved. You were less you were less tolerant of you know different events or different ideas back 20, 30, 40 years ago. But you were more respectful. Because but now it's kind of 
flipped around. It seems like we're more tolerant of, of ideas and social thoughts and the norms, but the respect and those components are kind of been pushed aside. And, and, and this is what more and more the neighbors are saying this year. A lot of the problems that have been reported are um, more alcohol dis related, alcohol -related, alcohol -related. but disrespect. Uh, um, the, the way they're treating the residents when they are disrespectful, the comments that are made to them, just the total lack of respect. So that's something new this year. Because I watched last night, a police car came and it kind of circled the police car. Then all of a sudden there was three police cars there. The house next door was like someone had kicked an anthill. People were just filing out like crazy yeah. with their beers and trying to get, get out of the way. It was almost kind of like you had a group that was kind of like blocking the police car, so every, maybe all the underage drinkers could get out of Dodge. It could be, you never know what they're up to. And it's not all of them, you know. I know, we it's not to, all yeah, of them. We gotta remember that. There's a lot of good students at Key State, and it does a lot of good for the community. It's just, it's in events like this that cause that uptick, you know. Um, anytime there's some big, you know, alumni weekend, homecoming weekend, uh, you know, the Pumpkin Fest, uh, there's a couple others, but when we get that, this is what the outcome is. It's just what we really need is for, I guess, the university system to, to understand and, and, and start changing their policies and the way they respond to off-campus housing and problems that happen off-campus. It seems like that's not really a venue that they can delve into, you know, that they can't get too involved in, or so they say. Um, I personally feel they should be more involved than the students that live off campus. It's their revenue, you know, they're making the money off of this, uh, not making the money, but yeah. you know what I mean? And so. a lot of times in a show, I like to come out with at least one zinger or one thing that gets people thinking. Yeah, yeah. I came to Pumpkin Fest early. I wanted to see what the weather was going to, and yeah. I was walking home. And I was walking behind um, four girls. Yeah. I have three daughters, so you know, that, that father thing with daughters. Yeah. And one of the girls, she was going, she says, you know what? I got so wasted last night, I passed out on the floor, and I didn't know where I was until I woke up this morning. And she was bragging about it. That, when you're talking about the change in culture, yes, it's a change in culture, right. but the thing is, I don't think she realizes how much she put herself at risk. Oh, absolutely. There was a um, university, I think it was out in Washington, where the police had to go, yes. because a lot, there was about 30 or 40 girls. Correct. They spiked all the drinks. Right. And once those drinks are spiked, you don't know what can happen. Right. And the last thing you want to do is send your daughter to a school. She gets sexually assaulted. That has a negative effect oh, on absolutely. the college and the community. So the college needs to take action because its reputation's on the line. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they they really need to monitor the the off-campus goings-ons. Um, uh, you know, it's like you said for the benefit of because all. Because. The city of Keene and the college have got together. There's a police officer on college, yep. and they, they really improved the decorum on college. Yes. Yeah. We don't have the drinking problems. We don't have the fire alarm problems. Right, right. That's something you saw back when you went to school, correct? Um, it's funny how they've shifted it from on to off and then <laughs> kind of stepped away from it. Yeah, Officer John Stewart, the <clears throat> liaison officer between the college and the uh, city of Keene has done a fantastic job. It started some years ago. It was carried on through Officer Madden. Then there was Officer Ben Nugent. And now it's Officer Stewart's turn. And I think they're going to keep revolving them through. But it's just something more needs to happen. We're at this point where we have this discussion all the time. You know, lately this discussion has been going on. And we're at this stalemate, it seems like. And, and we got to get over the hump, you know, so, so well, something more needs to, and I think it has to happen at the college, you know. From, and I want to thank you for your time, I want, for the information, yeah. and I noticed that some of the other communities around, inside the Keene, are forming their own neighborhood groups. Yep, yep, very yeah. important, yeah, and I wish that more and more would do that. It means a lot, um, the, the community, the city is really looking for the input from the, the neighborhood groups. Uh, it's been written into the master, pan, master yep. plan that's just been approved. Um, so that, that the formation of neighborhood groups would happen, so I'd like to see it continue on the path. So. Okay. Thank you. The, um, thank you. Hey, guys, come here. Uh, it, come on. You've been hiding behind this the whole time. You're looking in. You want to be on TV? Sorry about the Okay, you can sit down. You can be on TV. Good job. <laughs> Let me do this.
So what are you, were you a cat woman? What's your name? Destiny. Destiny? What school do you go to? Emerson. Emerson? Where's that located at? In Fitzwilliam. Fitzwilliam? You came all the way up here from Fitzwilliam in this cold weather? I love the pumpkin fest. You love How many times have you been to the pumpkin fest? Every year. Every year? I know you haven't been here all 20. No. Nah. Well, not all 20, <laughs> but since I've been born. Yeah. So um, if this is the last pumpkin fest, you'll really miss it, right? So. But I believe that it won't be the last. I hope not. The, um, did you march in the parade this morning? No, I was. He I got here around one, so I was late. Well, at least it's a little bit warmer now, and it's not raining and not windy. Yeah, when I, when we came here, it started to sprinkle. In there, where where are those two guys? No, call those two guys over here. Tell them how wussy they are. Come on, they keep saying they want to be on TV, and now they're all shy, hiding behind their mother. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for coming and enjoy yourself. You're going to have cotton candy or kellocorn? Yeah. Okay, and I know there's some free samples around. I yeah, know you... I had a free sample of Dunkin' Donuts. There's some donuts and some candy. I don't know if your mother's listening. She probably doesn't want you to eat it all, but I get, maybe you can slip it by. It's free, right? If it's free, it doesn't count. My mom likes free things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my daughter does too. She goes to the store, and if it's re free refills, it's, if it's free, it's for me. So your mom's a smart lady, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah, okay. Come on in, Brandy. <clears throat> Let <you> sit here. <clears throat> so, to close you, I've known you since you're a little girl. What about second grade? Yeah, second grade. Second grade, with my daughter and two little. What are you? Embarrassed? Shy? <laughs> embarrassed? You guys are not shy and embarrassed when you're running around the house all the time, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, you specifically flew in all the way from California just to attend the Pumpkin Fest. Yeah, Serena's been talking about it a really long time, and so I was excited to come see it. This is pretty amazing. Well, don't be nervous, you know, it's, it's just TV. <laughs> but, There's a crazy amount of jack-o'-lanterns here. I've never seen anything like this. What do you think some of the size of those? pumpkins. You don't exactly have those in California. No, no. When we were carving them today, I was like, this is insane. We have weak pumpkins in California. Nowhere near as thick. Very cool, though. Unfortunately, some, sometimes when we have this pumpkin fest, we just seem to constantly have bad weather. I don't know why we have <laughs> bad weather. And um, <clears throat> oh, a little windy. It, it was kind of scary yesterday. You didn't know if you'd be able to come or not. Yeah, when it was pouring rain and freezing cold, especially coming from California, I was like, there's no way I'm going outside tomorrow in the rain and cold. But I'm glad it cleared up. It's a little windy, but it's it's comfortable. Well, you know, in Southern California, we were out there. You had some of those monsoons. We've had some wind whip out. Exactly. And, but it usually doesn't last very long, and then we're off to do what we need to do the next day. So, But it's nice out today. It's actually not too bad. So of all the stuff here, what are you going to do? Cotton candy, candy corn? Kettle side? corn. I've already <laughs> spotted the caramel apple stand. Um, I'll probably get chili. I'll pretty much try everything here. <laughs> so you're leaving your California... The fried dough. Yeah. <laughs> You're leaving your California money in King. Yes, absolutely. A lot of it, probably. <laughs> well, we like it. Yes, good. <laughs> State of New Hampshire needs all the money it can get. Well, but California is much worse. Off. Yes, we are. <laughs> Maybe we should have a pumpkin fest. <laughs> yeah. Well, you terminated, didn't terminate the problem. <laughs> hey, Chris. No, I don't know if we expected him to, though. Hey, look at that Viking over Happy there. Pumpkin. No, we're no. not Viking. We're, we are yak. Yak? Peaceful grazing tribe. We're not Vikings. I would much rather be a Viking than a yak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the warrior in it. Yeah. Isn't it the yak in Mongolia? Mongolia? Bob, his wife has to come and take him away. He's not a very peaceful yak. Yeah. That's the eye doctor. I don't think he looked at himself in the mirror this morning. Very come on, cool. Sabrina. Sabrina. Don't run away. Bring them, bring the boys over. Come on. You know what? You guys, they're always talking all the time. Papa's on TV. Papa's on TV. <laughs> but no, you don't want to say anything. <laughs> you haven't been this quiet for a long time. <laughs> I don't even think your teachers are going to, um, they're going to see you and they're going to say, that's not Christian or Xavier. <laughs> huh? <laughs> 
Blum, I want to thank you for being here. Thank the you. The city of Keene and in New Hampshire, thank you for spending your money here. <laughs> I want you to enjoy yourself. I will. And have a good time. Thank you. You're welcome. See, that wasn't bad at all, was no, it? No, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to be nervous about. <laughs> we'll have fun. <laughs> okay. Come on. No, no, come on. You've been watching all the time. <laughs> Boy, for something, everyone's getting embarrassed. What's the problem? What do we need? Okay, who do we need? Here, come on. Yeah, you. You can bring your friend, too. Come on. You can stand right over here in the middle. So, what's your, what's your name? Malik. What is it? Malik. Where are you from? Massachusetts. Where in Massachusetts? Greenfield. Springfield? Greenfield. Oh, Greenfield. And Turner's Falls. And Turner's Falls. Yeah. And Turner's Falls, they got a lot of old mills there, don't they? So, did you just get here? Well, a couple hours ago. A couple hours ago? Yeah. And that's starting to rain on us. This your first pumpkin fest? Yeah, this is my I've first, been here first before, pumpkin fest. So what do you think about it? I think it's pretty good. What do you think about it, Malik? It's fun. So, what junk food do you eat? <laughs> Fried dough, Not caramel yet. apples, kettle corn. He kind of just eats you some random things. You eat all the free stuff, those free donuts and free candies, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely, right? Does your mother or father go, oh, or you sneak it in? Well, <laughs> his dad's right over there. I'm his friend. <laughs> so, you don't mind when he sneaks the free food in, right? <laughs> yep. It seems that everybody likes that free stuff, right? Yep. Well, if it's free, rest. it's not fattening, right? If it's free, it's not junk. If it's well. free, if it well, yeah, it depends on what it actually is. So, what grade are you in? Mm, I'm in fifth. And what grade are you in? Me too. Both in fifth. In there, so yeah, just a cool old time, right? Yeah. Okay, make That's sure you keep your jacket on. It's starting to rain again. And so, uh, how's it feel to be on TV? Isn't it kind of cool? It's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> And there's your father taking pictures of you, so it's pretty awesome. Okay. And um, maybe one of these guys will tell your dad how he can get you on the Internet so you can see yourself on the Internet. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> then you can show your friends in, sc in school that you're on TV. Yeah, it'd be so cool if they were watching right now. Well, they can't watch now, but they can watch on the Internet. Uh, okay. The internet? Really? This is the Internet? No, what they'll do is they put the show on the Internet, too because only a couple of um, towns can get our TV show here. Oh! In there, so he does a good job and puts it on the internet. These guys are kind of cool, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Have yeah. fun. You're welcome. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. How's it going? <clears throat> Well, I don't know. Here comes the wind. Oh, I don't need this one, right? <laughs> well, here comes the wind again. A little bit of rain. Hopefully it won't last too long. And see what we got. We should have um, Councilor Jim Duffy here in about 15 minutes. And let's see. A yak that went by before, that was old uh, doctor, the eye doctor. Like I said earlier, I don't think he looked himself in the mirror. Let's see. Who do we have? Who do we have? See if we can, how, how long is this? Can we get this? How's it going? Where are you from? I'm from Ashby. Ashby, Ashby, Mash? Where are you from? I'm from Benson Town, New Hampshire. You're not from the prison, are you? The hat <laughs> no. says Main State Prison. Yeah. And you? So, how do you like the pumpkin fest? It's cool. This your first one? No, I went last year. And you? Second one. I went last year also. You'd be kind of upset if this was the last pumpkin fest? Yes. Did you guys bring any pumpkins? No. No? Not. Uh, then how you gonna, what happens if we set a record? You won't be able to take credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you come next year, make sure you bring a pumpkin. Okay. Doesn't have to be big, doesn't have to be small. Just get a regular pumpkin. 
I know you guys can carve some faces in it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Go enjoy yourself. Hey. So who's the Marine? You the Marine? Yes. Your dad a Marine? Um, no. No? Okay, but you guys are Marine. Yes. I'm a Marine too. I was a Marine for 21 years. Wow. Wow, yep. Yeah, not too long. So what's your name? I'm Aiden. Aiden? Your name? Owen. Owen? Where are you from? I'm from Hudson. Hudson? I'm from Massachusetts. Mass your brothers or cousins? Or cousins. Cousins. Where in Massachusetts? Um, West Virginia. Oh, that's not too far of a ride. No. no, so you upset the Red Sox didn't make the playoffs? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. yes, no. What the? <laughs> Very upset. What about the Yankees last night? How the heck did they win? I don't know. I went to bed last night. It was 5 nothing, and I thought the Rangers were going to have a nice, easy victory. Me too. Then I wake up in the paper. It says the evil empire strikes back, beating yeah. Texas. You're a Red Sox fan, too? Patriots fan? Did you guys bring pumpkins? No, because we haven't called them yet. Hi, Mom. <clears throat> so, no, you got to bring pumpkins. You got to count in the record. You look a little cold, huh? Yeah, hopefully it won't rain anymore on you. Won't get too windy. Well, go have a good time, okay? Okay. Yep. <clears throat> and so. What do we have? Do we have another guest? Everybody's scared. They don't want to be on TV. I don't know why. Well, I have to stand up because I got to get kind of vain. You're showing that bald spot on my head. You know what? <clears throat> I'm not that religious. I'm not that good of a guy. I can't be a friar. Hey, how's it going, Mr. Duffy? You ready to hook up in a few minutes? Okay. While they're hooking you up, while they're micing you up, I'll talk to some other people. So, um, come on in. What's your name? Wayne. Wayne. So you're a um, Swamp Bat fan? I'm a volunteer for Swamp Bat. It's my sixth year. I sixth year? Sixth year, yep. So you go to every single game? Every home game, yeah. They do some great jobs. Yeah, they do. That's talking to Kevin. He said he has next year's team already chosen. It was, I'm trying to remember, was there a guy in San Diego th this year that used to be on the Swamp Pats? Tim Stauffer. Played for the Padres, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, Andre yeah San Diego. Dodgers. Yeah. yeah, the Swamp Pats have been producing a number of Major League Baseball players. Yeah. And you can't beat the price. No, you can't. Five dollars, you, you can't get anything in town for five dollars for that price anywhere. The best you can get is a, five, a foot long sub for five bucks. Yeah. And that's not like the game. I've taken my grandkids maybe three or four games, and they love it. I thought I saw you out there a couple games, yeah? Yeah, there was one where my grandson was with the, um, the catcher. Yeah. He, he was yeah. one of those, yeah. and he loved it. My granddaughter loves it even more. She's upset at me because I didn't buy her a swamp bad um, shirt. Oh, uh -huh. you better, I, you better I, I buy gotta, one. I got it. She goes, Papa, you haven't bought me one. You haven't bought me one. You better buy one then. I'm, I'm going to buy one. I thought they were going to win. It was going to be another game, but the season ended quickly. And yeah, I was... We did pretty good, though. Oh, yeah, you did pretty good. Yep. Cut the playoffs again, so we did pretty good. Yeah, and it does, and, and that's the best about it. It's enjoyable. It's jam-packed. You get more people than anybody else. Sometimes two, three thousand a game. That's for sure, yeah. I think what like New Bedford sometimes gets three, four hundred a game. Yeah, we, we have the most crowd, I think. We have the best turnout, I think, on the whole league. It must be frustrating when you guys go down to New Bedford or some of these other places and not too many people in the stands. Oh, wait, no, I don't, I don't go to the away games. I just do the home games. So. And yeah, so okay. Uh, have fun, and I'll make Thank sure you. we're out there for the next Swamp Bat game. And the first game we're out there, I'm buying my granddaughter a sweatshirt. I hope so. Okay. Have a good day, Chris. Yep. <clears throat> you scared? Yep. I'm going to talk to the wizard first. <clears throat> Come on, we got a wizard, a joker, and a cavalier. <laughs> hey, Mr. Cavalier. Come on. It's, <clears throat> it's not every time I get a wizard, a joker, and a cavalier in the same place. <laughs> I'm not hanging out in the right spot. I'm not hanging out in the right spot. 
And that's the Wardlock? Ward <laughs> uh, come on, so where are you from? Actually, right here from Keene. You're from Keene too? Yeah, no, I'm from uh, Brattleboro. Brattleboro and Keene? 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 Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I got to rotate around. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I guess they don't want to see my back. <laughs> so, how do you feel about the Pumpkin Fest? I think it's a great thing. I've been coming to it ever since it started. 20 year veteran. That's right. That's right. And I always dress up. And if you go to 198 Baker Street, you're going to see my entire house decorated. Yeah. Okay, I live on Davis Street, so I have to go by. Yeah. It is, it's all decorated, cemetery and all. <clears throat> well, you're, you're not as well dressed up as these other guys, but. No, I, I actually I enjoy watching the costumes and you know, participating. I think it's yeah. awesome. You know? So, how would you guys feel if the Pumpkin Fest, this was the last one? We wouldn't like it. You wouldn't like no, it? No, we wouldn't like it at all. Pumpkin Fest helps to find Keen. Yeah. Yes. Because as I travel around the country, almost every single town has a historic district. When, when, I, right. when I lived in California, they had a kids' magazine in the schools, and Keene was in the kids' magazine, Pumpkin Festival. Because it gives an identity. Right. Just because I have a historic district, unless you're like Newport or Portsmouth, no one goes and shows up. Right. Right. And so um, right. this is. And um, I think Oprah's magazine a few years ago had um, the Pumpkin Fest in it. And there was a few other magazines that had the Keen Pumpkin Fest. Yep. And what about, yeah, Boston has the record, but Boston has 600,000 people. I was going to say, it's a and huge they, city. And they only beat us by a, mi a thousand pumpkins. Yeah, it's a huge <coughs> city, though. I mean, come on. They shouldn't even be in the same league. <laughs> and there's probably someone who went out and bought a couple of thousand just to put them in there. Yeah. Right. So there wasn't really pumpkins. Okay, right. guys, we got to go find a bar. <laughs> we got to find a bar. So are you a musketeer or a cavalier? One of the musketeers. Okay, one of the musketeers. Yes. The good one or the bad one? Dark Tanya. Although I'm a little long <laughs> in the tooth for it. But. <laughs> oh, well. well, you got the dentist. He can file your tooth there down. You go. Okay. okay. Well, thank, thank you, guys. You. Enjoy Stadio. yourself. Bruce and Lorna? Yes. <laughs> they're they're and watching. Dad. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we're back. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Right now, How are you doing? Mr. Duffy, City Council. Yeah. And there, so, where the heck did I do with that? I put it in my pocket. So, <clears throat> it's good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. yeah the weather, not as good as we were hoped to. Uh, it's but getting better. better. Than the worst part. Yeah, it's not yesterday. That's not good. yesterday. That's not. Yeah. I had to bring my granddaughter up to um, the hospital and going up 91. That weather was brutal. Ooh. Brutal. And I'm saying, oh. this. I don't know how we can have the pumpkin fest. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of people stopped setting up yesterday. It was just too much. The wind, the rain. But uh, we have a good crowd here. We do. Yeah. <coughs> um, hope we get the record. If not, there's always next year. We were talking about to those gentlemen, the, the Warlog, the Cavalier, the Three Musketeers. Boston's only beat us about a thousand. It was nine hundred and something, I think. Yeah. But they got six hundred thousand people yeah. just in Boston alone. True. And uh, the carved jack o' lanterns were done mechanically with power tools, oh. and yeah, that's what I heard. They just, yeah. You know, they probably the had line. some people buy three, four thousand pumpkins yeah. and hire some people. Yeah. You can tell these, these are done individually. The kids oh, yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. The kids in all the schools, they all take part. Yeah. I know my kids have always enjoyed uh, my son. He carved his pumpkins on Thursday and yeah, they're I haven't here somewhere. Seen, I haven't <laughs> seen any proposals, marriage proposals, but no. you know there's one or two out there. There's always, there always is. Beneath the great pumpkin. Between the great pumpkin. <laughs> all we need is Charlie Brown. Yeah. Well, this is great. I mean, you know, this is the 20th year. It's just gotten bigger and bigger every year. And uh, one thing I noticed, uh, my wife and I, we moved here uh, to Keene 15 years ago. People in New England really love Halloween. And this is just a, an extension of that, I think. And, you know, people really put a lot of effort into decorating their homes, their costumes. It's, uh, it's real neat to see. One of the things I think is really important about the Pumpkin Fest is what you don't notice this year. Yeah. And what you don't notice this year, there's no dogs. No, well, I saw one coming well, in. Muzzled. Muzzled. But there is no <laughs> dogs. No. And I just live, but that was one of my biggest complaints. You had uh, dogs, they yeah. were, you know, dogs doing what dogs yeah. do. 
Then you get yeah. two dogs, male dogs together. Four or five years ago, maybe longer, uh, our dog stole a hot dog from a man's hand. <laughs> so <laughs> we didn't take her again after that. Yeah, and so this is a people event. This yeah. is a little kid's event. Yeah. And some of these people with German Shepherds and other big dogs. Yeah, that doesn't work. You know, you work. may love your dog, but the dog doesn't belong here. No, it's too too crowded, too, too many people. Yeah. Because I had talked to the... The patrol up. He's not. He didn't even bring his um, police dog here yeah. because they were just worried about all the stuff going on. It just uh -huh. wasn't worth the risk. Yeah. And so, if a trained police dog isn't worth the risk, having um, just a regular animal yeah. is just not worth the yeah. risk. It's not. Yeah. <clears throat> but I've noticed a few things logistically this year that are really neat. They've opened up the crosswalk so people can come across, and it seems to really be improving the flow here. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and so. There's always one of those questions that people have. When is too big, too big? Yeah. And this year, yep, we, we probably were not going to have the amount of people we had last year because of the way Thursday and Friday were. Yeah. But it's moving. Oh, you yeah. You can go to, yeah. you can buy food. You can buy the kettle corn without having to waste an hour and a half yeah. in, in line. So maybe this size or a little bit bigger is good. Yeah. yeah. And people can stop in the store. Yeah. And if everybody just brought one pumpkin, we'd have the record forever. <laughs> yeah, I talked to a number of kids. They didn't bring pumpkins. They came yeah. here. You know, so what? We got to convince their parents to yeah. do it. Yeah. But then again, this has been a rough year for pumpkins. Oh, yeah. The, the yeah. drought and yeah. the rain washed about 100,000 yeah. down the Connecticut yeah. River. That's not good. <laughs> There'll be a lot of fish at the end in Long Island Sound yeah. now. Have a lot of pumpkins. <laughs> <clears throat> so let's talk about downtown. Uh huh. Look, downtown is quite different than it was last year. It certainly is. We have a lot of local uh, business people who've relocated to Main Street, which is great. Uh, there's been sort of a migration from the, the Colony Mill, uh, the kitchen store. They seem to be doing great. Uh, Ingenuity. Ingenuity. Uh, pocket full of rye. Uh, there's a few others, I think. But Miranda Veranda is under new ownership. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, the <clears throat> and it's bringing... People are spending, I've been noticing at night, yeah. more and more tourists are yeah. walking up and down yeah. King. Yeah. Yeah. Then the, um, the Marriott. Yeah. If I remember right, the Marriott is pretty full, but it required two nights. Spend. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> and all those people are spending money in yeah. Keene. Yeah. Well, this is, a great, this is a great little town to visit. You know, if you're not looking for big events or big things happening, if you just want to enjoy a small town with good restaurants, lively downtown, beautiful scenery, you know, easy to walk, this is, yeah, this is the place to be, for sure. It's and beautiful. And EF Lane, when we walk by there, there if you look in the window, they're yeah, foam. So yeah. this, and then we look at the other, um, I haven't been by the Holiday yeah. or Best Western well, or Motel. Yeah. Pretty sure. They're pretty well full. Yeah. Well, I, I know as far north as Sullivan County and parts of Vermont, uh, Pumpkin Festival weekend brings in a lot of people. So it not only uh, helps downtown, but the regional economy as well. It, uh, it gives it a big boost. And Pumpkin Fest weekend isn't just a one or two day event. Yeah. People a lot of times may take their whole vacation, yeah. stop at different places. Yeah. So the Pumpkin Fest, you're right. Benefits Massachusetts, benefits yeah. Vermont, and other yeah. parts of New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. And so, <clears throat> what about some of the other things that are happening, Keen? Uh, wow. Water and sewage rate, you know, was pretty good this year. <laughs> <laughs> we held the line. <laughs> I know, and <clears throat> it wasn't too long yeah. ago that I could have my water and sewage under yeah. 100 bucks, yeah. but the, my last bill, about 275. Yeah. And that's having a negative yeah. effect on a lot of people. Yeah. Well, now that my daughter has moved out of the home, our, I've noticed our water bill has gone way down. Anyway, so. You know, you got to wash that hair twice yeah, a day, wash it in. So, yeah. 45 minute showers, hot. Well, wait a minute, you're the green guy. Yeah, well. <laughs> Your daughter doesn't count. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not the green police, though. <laughs> but. So. But yeah, uh, but actually, we've had pretty reasonable rates uh, for a long time in Keene. And, uh, you know, they're starting to equalize, but uh, go up a bit. But we're still, I think, for most communities our size in the state, our, our rates are pretty reasonable. Well, but it comes down to a lot of times communities under a lot of pressure not to spend on capital projects. Yes, yeah. and then you get hurt Keen, down the road. 
Keen went, whether you like it or not, Keen went a long time. Very long. Without spending on the capital. Yeah. Like repairing the streets, the water, the yeah. sewer. Yeah. Now it, it's catching up. Yeah. But one thing that we really have to talk about, the city manager and his staff, even thought we're in a downturn, then they may push some back, but they're not doing away with capital improvements. Exactly. They're not selling yeah. our soul today. Yeah. Well, that's the beauty of having a plan. You can, you, can, you can work with it. You can put some things off. You can do a little bit, if not all. You know, at least you know what, what has to be done, and that's, that's really important. And it's kind of like a fire engine. If the fire engine has 10 years of life, you, you've got to keep putting money away. Yeah. And just say, well, you know, we have two or three bad years. Yeah. Well, if you go two or three bad years, don't put it in. When the 10th year comes, you may, you're going to get whacked with a big bill and yeah. your taxes are going to go through yeah. the roof. Yeah. Yeah, we pay enough taxes as it is. Yeah, we do. Whatever we can do to keep it from going crazy. <laughs> and we're talking about Keene. What do you think of the new middle school, the new Y? Well, I've, uh, the construction seems to be going on the middle school really, really quickly. I have to confess, I haven't seen uh, what's happened at the, I know they've broken ground and they've started at the new Y. Well, that's, uh, that's going to really change uh, the texture and character of, of, uh, of those neighborhoods over there. And I, I, I think for the best. I think it's, it's for the best. It's done right. The Y, the current Y is old. Yeah. There's, there's no parking. Yeah. It's not very friendly to elderly. Exactly. <clears throat> and I, or I middle age. I, I get lost <laughs> in those stairs. <laughs> it's supposed to be senior moments, not yeah. middle age moments. Yeah, well. <laughs> But yeah, I think uh, I think the Y in the new middle school. Uh, you know, we're uh, we're already looking at ways to improve the, the the bike and pedestrian access out there, make it safe to walk back and forth. Uh, I think when the North Bridge is done, it'll make it a lot easier for people to get to that side of town, uh, not having to cross the bypass. And when you're talking about yeah, we're spending money to fix Maple Ave and stuff. Yeah. But one thing at the FOP. We gave approval, and hopefully the city council, which I suspect they should do, yeah. for up to a grant, up to $149,000 yeah. for safe pathways to schools. Yeah, safe routes to schools, yeah. And, yeah. and that will make a major yeah. change. Yeah. Because, yeah, we've had some accidents at Jonathan Daniels. Yep. And so a lot of parents, their kids, they live right next to the school. Yeah. But they're they just afraid yeah. to allow their kids to walk a bike because yeah. it's such a dangerous area. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's secondary, uh, well, there's other benefits to having more children walk to school, too. The, the less, I mean, the high school is a good example. Cars are queued up sometimes from the entrance uh, to the high school all the way back to the, the Arch Street uh, Park Avenue intersection, just idling. And that's not, that's not healthy air to breathe. And if you're going to school five days a week, you know, nine months out of the year, it's, uh, it's not good for you. And plus, while you worry about safety, but allowing their kids to walk to school gives them a sense of yeah. confidence. Yeah. I live right next to Wheelock, and I can yeah. look from my window, kitchen window, and watch mm -hmm. it all to Wheelock yeah. to the um, yeah. crossing guard lady. Yeah. <clears throat> when my, my grandson was in first grade, I said, you know what, Christian, it's time for you. You can walk, yeah. you can walk to school today. Oh, they love can it. I walk yeah. to school today? Yeah. And so he, he, he would go, he says, I'm a big kid, I'm a big kid. Yeah. But you'd watch him about every 10 feet. He he'd would stop and, and around, look around, yeah. stop and look around. <laughs> and every day later, he'd go longer yeah. and longer. <clears throat> but it made him feel so great yeah. and big. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I didn't start walking to school until fifth grade. Uh, in fourth grade, it was, it was about a mile and a half. And uh, we, we were required to take the buses. Uh, but once I started fifth grade, you could walk. And it was great. It was great. Well, excuse Stop. me for one second. Sure. So how long have you been here today? I just came here at 3 o'clock. Oh, okay. And so, so you've been here uh, all morning? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I was going to say, you have My to do a lot of talking. My grandkids slept over last night, so yeah. <clears throat> they were fighting over who was going to get the blue controller on the PS2 for <laughs> the Star Wars. Game. Even thought they both work the same. They think the blue <laughs> controller works better. Uh, but you know how boys can be at times. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I came early to come out here and take them out and figure out how I was going to yeah. dress up, whether I was going to sit here and freeze all night. <laughs> <clears throat> but I decided to put the boots on instead yeah. of the sneakers. Yeah. <clears throat> so. So how's your show going? Your show's been on the air now. Uh, this will be months. the 14th episode. Wow. Wow. And then you're producing it. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <You're doing> it. <laughs> <clears throat> but you know, and the whole purpose of the show. Yeah was not to be political, yeah. not to be like Glenn Beck or yeah. just going after people. It's just to provide um, information. Yeah. And um, hopefully in the, in the future, we're going to have one on the United Way. Yeah. And we're hoping to do one at the Senior Center mm -hmm. and for um, oral history of veterans. Wow. And so we're members at the Senior Center, and so we're going to get the date down, and we invite any veteran or um, spouse of veteran to come down and oh, talk. Oh, that's great. That's and we'll great. do a two-hour show and run it the week yeah. of Veterans Day and after. Yeah. Because we have a lot of veterans, especially World War II, they yeah. can't go out to the rec center. Oh, there's November Governor 11th. Lynch. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you know how those politicians are. <laughs> <laughs> but um, to do that, um, got one of my professors <laughs> down at the college in economics. And yeah. I'm, I want to have him come on and talk yeah. about economics in layman's terms. Yeah. Or as I say, Forrest Gump it so most people can understand <laughs> when it goes, wow, we're out of the recession. Well, that's only a technical term. Yeah. When people are, are losing mm -hmm. their jobs, mm -hmm. they go, wait a minute, how can we be out of recession? Yeah. yeah. And so... <clears throat> well, the, the thing that disturbs me the most for the past three decades most uh, working Americans have been losing the value of their, their wages. Uh, they haven't really gone up or caught up with the cost of living. Uh, the, there's been no significant, really, uh, uptick in uh, you know, middle you class use, wages for, for three decades. Use, yeah. That's a bad sign. Because if you use constant dollars, yeah. it's been ni 1973 was the peak yeah. of workers' wages in the yeah. United States. And that's having a big effect. Yeah. It's kind of like right now, the Social Security. Yeah. No increase last year, yeah. no increase this yeah. year. But the taxes are going up. Taxes, cost you know, of living. Well, it, the inflation is kind of, but, the, but there's another. But here's the plot of inflation. We don't count food and energy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you go, I can go yeah. to a store, and, my, and I said, wait a minute. The price of bacon went up a dollar a pound. Yeah, yeah. Well, but that doesn't count in the inflation. Yeah. And so... The other part is and uh, college tuition has gone way up. College tuition is. I going basically way up. worked worked and borrowed very little my way through undergrad. It was it, it could be done. It was room and board was about this was in the late seventies early eighties. It was the college I went to was sixty three hundred dollars a year room and board tuition. When I went to Keene State, the um, I worked three part time jobs during the school year, two yeah. full time jobs yeah. during the summer. Yeah, and I graduated in 77. I had $13,900 yeah. in loans. Very, very manageable. <laughs> very well, 100, 150,000. Yeah, the, yeah. My first um, job in, in the Marine Corps, I was only getting 690 bucks a month, but, but I knew in the future I was going to get much more, so yeah. it made it pretty easy to pay off. Yeah. And you get some of these kids, they finance their whole five years in Keene State. All of a sudden, you get $75,000 in yeah. debt. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have high-paying jobs out there. No, no. <clears throat> Even if you get yeah. a job as a teacher yeah. and you start at thirty thousand, yeah. yeah. How do you pay off yeah. seventy-five thousand yeah. dollars? Well, you you move back home. <laughs> I read an article this week. Uh, the, the term now is boomerangs. But uh, yeah, the they leave Center, and come back. But it, it just says in King Sentinel was eighty-three percent of all the kids who plan on yeah. graduating plan on moving home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what. If I'm spending all this money to send my kids to college for five yeah. years, and yeah. me and my wife are home free, we don't have yeah. nothing to worry about, <clears throat> the last thing I want to do is wake up on one day and there's a knock on the door and my kid's coming back and saying, <laughs> Mom, Dad, you know what? <clears throat> you know you're not going to charge them rent. You yeah. know they're going to take long showers. You know they're I might charge rent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You'd like to charge rent. I'm not even draw up a lease. <laughs> yeah. You'd like to charge rent. Yeah. But the other one says about 50% yeah. of the kids under 20, between 18 and 29 yeah. don't have a full-time job. No. How, do you, <clears throat> how yeah. do you charge them rent? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you get a college degree, $75,000 yeah. in loans, yeah. 
and maybe you get a job as a wait staff. Yeah. It's, it's not a little easy. frustrating. It's it, not it easy. Is. Yeah. You feel like you've been kind of betrayed. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we I think we have a lot of work to do in this country. Uh, we have a lot of waking up to do. Uh, we really need to roll up our sleeves and, uh, you know, do well, some some sensible planning, uh, make it easier for the majority of the people who are really struggling. And uh, I think we have to find a way to say we all can't have it all. No. Nah. We can't. Nah. We're not Bill Gates. Nah. We're not Steve Jobs. No. Nah. If I'm making forty thousand dollars a year, I can't buy a fifty thousand dollar truck. No. In today's unless I live at home, unless you live at home, <laughs> <laughs> and then have mom and dad pay for the insurance and the gas. Um, that uh, hits too close to home. Yeah. I have a daughter yeah. that I'm paying for the car. Uh, at least I'm not paying for the gas, but I'm paying yeah. for the insurance and all the uh, maintenance. Never uh, did I think that that would ever happen. Yeah. But it's a different. It's a, it's a different world. If I yeah, don't pay yeah. for it, she doesn't get away to work, and yeah. she doesn't work. Yeah. Then I have to pay her rent. Yeah. So it's which is the worst of. Um, yeah. But yeah, we were talking about what we're going in is. I remember seeing a couple of guys who worked at Alma Lance's. Yeah. My father-in-law used to work. They still does work there, and they may be getting fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, fourteen to fifteen dollars an hour, and I go and say. Holy crap, that truck's $45,000. How in the world do they afford it? And it goes, well, I get a 96-month loan. I go, a 96-month loan? The car won't have any value. And if someone says, oh, yeah, I have to pay 36, 37 months just to own a penny in the car. Can you just picture three years in the truck of just all interest? Wow. Yeah. And uh, we don't say no. Yeah. The Keen Sentinel today, we're talking about foreclosures. A woman, $29,000, that's her salary, work, a factory worker. Yeah. She goes buys a house for $360,000 in Fontana, California. Okay. <clears throat> and then um, she's in trouble. She, of course, she can't afford it. Yeah. So she thought she got a good deal. Then she says, she was lured in and forced to um, take this loan at four and three, something like four and three quarters percent, but then ballooned up to 11. And <clears throat> then it goes that Bank of America finally bought it. So Bank of America says, okay, they modified her loan and they modified the loan to the value of her house. And, but the thing was, it says the first 10 years was gonna be all interest. So, they figured that then be bad. Yeah. Well, then she went to. Oh, what's oh, the matter? You gonna bring bad, it in uh, now? What's the matter? Come on in. No, no. What's this? Come on. Here's Christian. What's the matter, huh? You all nervous? <laughs> yes. What's the matter? You th you think all the girls are gonna look at your curly hair? <laughs> what are you gonna say? Huh? What you, that's not for me. Oh, that's right. You, you brought dropping it off, so bring it to Mimi after I'm done with the show, right? Mm. <clears throat> you know, you had Mrs. Seal in a couple years ago, right? Yeah. And Mr. Smith? Yeah. You know, how many timeouts did you get for being noisy and rowdy and stuff? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know or you can't remember? I can't remember. Uh, and so they're going to be really surprised if they see you and they see you all quiet, right? Yeah. Oh, so they're going to think that you were just playing tricks on them. Huh? Okay. So I'll take the bag before you break it, and I'll stop from embarrassing you, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh, there it is. Will there it is. Audrey, me? will you marry yeah. me? I knew we'd have at least one. Wow. <clears throat> Wait, let's see. Hey, is Audrey there? Is Audrey over there? Let's go see if Audrey's over there. Can we make it? <laughs> okay. What time is it? Oh, you're on TV. You're on TV now. Careful. Oh, at four o'clock up <clears> there. <throat> Have you talked to Brian? Want to hang out here? I will. I walk down. Yeah. Is it going to fit? 
Of course you said yes, right? Of course. <laughs> oh. Was it a total surprise? Yes, I What did you pack? I didn't see you at the line. So aren't you glad we have a pumpkin for us, right? You? And your name is Audrey. Uh, What's your name? Steve. Oh, I'll pronounce it wrong. Steven, you from Keene? Or? Dublin. Dublin? So it's not too bad? No, nope, no. Nope. What were you going to do if the weather was really bad, cold, and windy? Yeah, we were going to be here no matter what, so. <laughs> Hold the mic up. Hold the mic up. All right. I kept saying over to my guests over there, I'm saying is, there's always one or two. Who is yeah. going to be yeah. the first? Yeah. And so Are you we got, the first? you're the first. <laughs> you're the first today. <clears throat> so when's the date going to be? Don't know uh, yet? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no idea. But she said yes, so you can yeah, sit yeah, down yeah. and have a date. I think she did. <laughs> so are you going to take your pumpkin with you, or are you going to leave it here? Uh, I don't know. I hadn't even thought about that. Can we come back and get it later? Sure. You can come back and get it later. Yep. You need it as a souvenir, right? You at least yep, got to yep. take a you got to take a picture of it. Yeah, we did. We got one. Okay. And if you want, come back to the um, TV show and get your name, and then we can send you a copy of the VDD. All right. v DVD, I All right. think. Okay. Awesome. Well, Thank you. Congratulations, both of you. She said yes. That would be kind of embarrassing if someone said no. <laughs> but I think that worked out pretty good. Well, there's the second dog. Oh, the second dog. dog. Third uh -oh. dog. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so, one of the things about the Pumpkin Fest, the charities. Yes. And yes. we look at it, MGM, CNS, yeah. Bank of Walpole, yeah. a number of the, they're actually allowing um, parking. Parking. Charging for it. Yeah, charging. I saw that at the, well, it's now <clears throat> People's United. The, um, um Forgot the charity that's. Uh, you got the charity, the one at the um, Center at Keene. Yeah. That's for Manadnock yeah. Prevention of Family Violence. Right. Uh, I think um, the one at Walpole, I don't know if that's yeah. for head injuries or yeah. what. But all the um, businesses are getting involved, yeah. allowing these charities to earn yeah. money. Yeah. And in this downtime, yeah. It helps a lot. It, it helps a lot. Well, it's another thing to uh, praise Keene about. Okay. Um, you know, it's uh, our community in action. It's so, Pumpkin Festival, everything that goes into helping support it, and this is a year-round thing. This is just, you know, the most obvious and uh, biggest uh, community effort that uh, that we do. But it's, okay. it's an amazing place. Okay. You am I done? Yeah, leaving on me, right? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay. Well, enjoy the show. Thank you. And we're out here on the long road. Yeah. Maybe we'll see you to get tonight before you leave. Oh, I'll be here a while. Okay. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you. Take care, Chris. Okay. Bye bye.